أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين لا إله إلا الله قبل كل شيء لا إله إلا الله بعد كل شيء لا إله إلا الله استغفر إنه رفوف غفور رحيم الحمد لله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله جزاكم الله خير فكمين إن شاء الله تعالى Welcome all to the first day of the Islamic Diploma based here in Nottingham إن شاء الله تعالى الحمد لله truly we're all blessed to be here إن شاء الله تعالى today is the first of Muharram of the new year إن شاء الله تعالى so how else Better is that to start the new year, inshallah ta'ala. There's dollars of khair, inshallah ta'ala. And truly, inshallah ta'ala, we should, be, we should be grateful for being here, inshallah ta'ala. All of us should be very pleased and grateful to be here today, inshallah ta'ala. Because truly, we've been told that the angels spread their wings for us to walk on as we're coming here, inshallah ta'ala. And with the right intention, inshallah ta'ala, that we come next week and the following weeks, the malaika will spread their wings for us to walk on for all the time, inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we know that all the creatures in the earth, we're told that all the creatures in the earth will pray for our forgiveness, inshallah ta'ala, as we, as we make the intentions to be students of knowledge, inshallah ta'ala. This is a great maqam and a great station for us to be, to be entering into, inshallah ta'ala. So I, I begin just by asking everyone just to think about what their intentions are, inshallah ta'ala, for being here, inshallah, today. And what is, their, what is your intention, inshallah ta'ala? Because in the hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're told that we only get what we're intended. We only get what we intend. So we make big intentions, inshallah ta'ala, that Allah gives us big rewards, inshallah and big, big openings from, from this dars, inshallah, from this class, inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. We make sure our intentions are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because truly, if they're not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's just entering into our own destruction. Allah save us from it, inshallah ta'ala. So alhamdulillah, we welcome Shaykh Zakir uh, into Nottingham, inshallah ta'ala. Well, this is the first time he's been teaching in Nottingham, inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. But very briefly about Shaykh Zakir. Um, he studied for eight years in Damascus. Alhamdulillah. Uh, he passed through Jordan and spent about six months in Mauritania um, before spending about a year in Yemen, in Tarim, in Hadramat. Alhamdulillah. He started his studies initially before that, studying in Manchester University. So he's been through the Western education system as well. He knows what a lot of us have been through. Alhamdulillah. He has a jazza in many topics, um, from Quranic tafsir to hadith to fiqh. Not only Hanfi fiqh, but Shafi fiqh and Hanbali fiqh as well. Uh, he has a jazza in logic, aqidah. The Arabic language and in rhetoric, alhamdulillah. Allah increase him and reward him, inshallah ta'ala, and preserve him, inshallah ta'ala. So, the topics we're going to be studying in this time, we're going to start off with Ilm al Quran, touching upon Tafsir al Quran, okay? Looking mainly at the, at the Fatiha, the, the very basics, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to move on into Ilm al Quran, I'm sorry, Ilm al Hadith, and Imam Nawi's 40 Hadith, inshallah ta'ala. From there, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be going into Sirah. Aqeedah and Ihsan, inshallah ta'ala. Unfortunately, the fiqh element has been removed, inshallah ta'ala. I, I, I do apologize. So, except for the fiqh, we'll be covering everything we'll be covering will be fard ayn knowledge, inshallah ta'ala. Knowledge that is compulsory upon every you know, mature member of our community to know, inshallah ta'ala. In the form of assessments, there'll be an assessment set at the end of each unit, inshallah ta'ala. And they'll be taken in the form of an essay, inshallah ta'ala. You can work on your own time, complete them, and submit them, inshallah ta'ala. More information will be given as, as time goes by, inshallah ta'ala. And in regards to supporting you guys with, that, with those essays and with that, inshallah ta'ala, we're, we're endeavoring to, to open up like um, maybe a weekly, two weekly or a monthly study study circle for people who, who need a bit of help, a bit of support. We just want to just discuss some ideas of what we've been learning in the class. Uh, it'll be completely informal. Um, we'll be organizing that in time, inshallah ta'ala. Um, and it would just be a bunch of brothers and a bunch of sisters getting together and if they want to spend that time studying together inshallah ta'ala in order to support each other inshallah ta'ala we'll make that time available for you but again as time goes by we'll, we'll let you know how, how, that, how that develops inshallah ta'ala ok so we're, we're due to run until 12.30 inshallah uh, when the class is finished um, anyone who hasn't already registered online with the dollar.com website um, we should have application forms here um, so if people can spend some time after that just filling out the application forms so we've got everyone's details and we can get everyone registered, insha'Allah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Uh, in regards to the payment, um, we're looking at taking payments once every three months, insha'Allah ta'ala. The overall cost of the course is £200. Um, again, there is discounts if people have brought the evidence, insha'Allah. Um, yeah, insha'Allah, we're looking at taking every three months. So if people can pay today for the first three months, alhamdulillah, that would be nice, insha'Allah ta'ala. Again, they'll be coming all sorted out after the class, insha'Allah ta'ala. Um, and also, just to let you all know, um, Sidi Abu Jafar uh, from the Lotary Institute, is, um, he, he's, he's developing a, a syllabus for a, a, a HIFS class, a part-time HIFS class, um, that's due to run over five years. Now, he's, he's setting it up so it's designed for people who have no knowledge of Qur'an, almost like not even the alphabet. And he's going to build everyone up through it, 
um, slowly over the five years, inshallah. So by the end of the five years, we should have the, the, the whole Quran by memory, inshallah. He's doing a presentation today at three o'clock at the Lotary Institute, inshallah. And I think it would be a nice idea maybe to go and just to see what see what it's saying, inshallah. Now, does anyone have any questions about any of the you know the housekeeping issues before I pass over to Shia? Is everyone happy? We're all happy. الحمد لله رب العالمين استغفر الله وغفر الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الاولين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الاخرين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في كل وقت وحين استغفر الله انه غفور رحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم إني نويت تعلم وتعليم تذكر وتذكير النفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة وحث تمسك بكتاب الله ولا سنة الرسول الله ودعاء الهداة لا تخيب تجوج الله مرضاته قرب ثوب الله تعالى اللهم ها هنا بين يديك وضعفنا لا يخفى عليك فتعملنا بلطفك جودك يا رحم الرحيمين ويصلحنا أمور كلها ظاهرها وباطنها في النقاء على كل شيء كبير وعلى سؤالنا يا جرير سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين طيب بارك الله جزاك من الخير for everybody for coming today mashallah ta'ala as we heard from our dear brother Shaheed mentioning some of the fadail of the halaqat or the majalis of dhikr of ilm uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the people who go and gather and seek knowledge the malaika tada ajnihtum rad bima yasna' the malaika prays there wings under the feet of the people who go to seek knowledge and this is a gathering which we are gathering here of the soul for the, for, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what gathering can be better than the gathering which we are here to see and to gain the countenance of Allah jalla wa la'ala as we hear also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in a famous hadith in which Imam al-Shafi'i says for in the nisf hadha din yadura al hawla hadha hadith Imam al-Shafi'i mentioned that the half of this deen revolves around this particular hadith and the most famous hadith, I'm sure many of us have memorized in Arabic and in English. And the hadith is, إِنَّمُ الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Indeed, actions are but according to intentions. إِنَّمُ الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ إِنَّ مَلِكٌ لِمْرِئٍ مَا نَوَاهِ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى الدُّنْيَا يُسِيبُهَا وَإِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِهُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجِرَ إِلَيْهِ The full hadith that the Prophet said, a person has that which he intends. And a person has that which he intends. So a person migrates for Allah and his Prophet, has indeed migrated for Allah and his Prophet. And a person who uh, marries, uh, wo- uh, migrates to marry a woman, then that is for his intention and he would have that which he intended. So we are gathered here solely for the Allah's pleasure, solely to raise the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the companions uh, asked the Prophet, Man yujahidu fi sabilillah, who traverses in the path of Allah or in, in jihad fi sabilillah. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned uh, a response to this, which is a shamil and a kamil, which is basically a response which is totally encompassing uh, of the deen, which when the Prophet ﷺ, he said, الَّذِي يُرِيدَ أَنْ يُعْلَى كَلِمَةَ اللَّهِ That person who wants to raise the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're all here for that reason, that this, the way the course, inshallah ta'ala, Allah, you wafaq Allah, uh, give us divine providence in this, the way the course is structured is that we want you to take this knowledge with the intention of inshallah passing this knowledge on to other uh, other people. So it will be as if you are within the call of the Prophet alayhi salatu uh, when he said, alayhi yujahid fi sabirillah, alayhi yu'li qalimat Allah, that person raises the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and to increase us and to make some of the people of nur and, and guidance uh, for us, uh, first and foremost for ourselves. And thereafter for anybody else that we, alhamdulillah, spread these words to, inshallah ta'ala. So, we mentioned that this particular course will start off with Ulum al-Qur'an, as you can see in, on, the, uh, on the slide in front of you. And the question you may be asking yourself right now is, what does that actually mean? What does Ulum al-Qur'an uh, mean? And as obvious as the question may be, is that why should we start off with the study of the Qur'an? As you may have heard, the Qur'an is the masdar, or is the origin of the deen. The Qur'an is the origin of this deen. That is, everything comes uh, in essence from the Qur'an. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَا فَرَّتْنَا مِنْهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We have not left anything from the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Imam al-Suyuti 
one of the famous scholars of the deen, he says about the Quran, he says, لَيْسَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ أَنْوَاعُ الْعُلُومِ إِلَّا فِي الْقُرْآنِ يُدِلُّ عَلَيْهِ He said there's no branch of knowledge in human existence except that the Quran has guided people towards it, either directly or indirectly. And a person who returns back to the Quran uh, time and time again will find new secrets of the Quran which previous generations have not found. That's why the Quran sometimes is called Al-Bahr Al-Muhil. One famous scholar, Abu Hayyan Al-Andalusi, uh, he, he has a tafsir called Al-Bahr al muhit Al-Bahr means ocean, al muhit means something that's unfathomable, impossible to get to the bottom of. And the Quran is just that. In that the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each generation will come to the book. Each generation will look at the verses of the book. Each generation will comprehend the verses of the book, yet each generation will find something new. That's why from the previous generations we had tafsir from the time of Sayyidina Ibn Abbas and indeed from the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Then going through the generations you've had, the, you've had Fakhruddin al-Razi for example coming with tafsir al-Kabir. Going further, Bahr al-Madid by Ibn Ajiba. Continuing, each generation has come and today in our present generation we had the Zira uh, al-Quran of Sayyid Qutub, al-Manar by uh, Rashid al-Rida and other scholars also. So the Qur'an is as such, it's a person will never be able to reach the depth of or the uh, complete ihata or the complete uh, uh, covering of, uh, of the Qur'an. And this is the nature of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says about it, هذا, هذا Allah says, indeed this book, we have revealed it as a blessed book. We have revealed this as a uh, blessed book. And it's a very famous saying of, of, our, of our master, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, one of the famous uh, fuqaha, or the, one of the famous uh, ulama, the scholars of the companions. And as we know, not all the companions were the same. There was, from amongst the companions, there were those that were famous for their bravery. There were others that were famous for their, uh, for their knowledge. Others famous for their piety. Uh, so all sahabas were at different uh, darajat, different levels. And Ibn Mas'ud has a very famous saying, which is say in Arabic, uh, for initially then translated reason we say it in Arabic is barakah then there's a, a spiritual blessings within the Arabic language uh, which is lost sometimes it's translated so we'll start off with the Arabic initially and move on inshallah ta'ala to the, uh, to the English uh, Ibn Masud he said in a famous saying he said about the book he said Fihi ma qablikum. in it is news of that which came before you that is the nations that came before you then he continues he says وَخَبَرُ مَا بَعْدِكُمْ And also news of that which is to come in the future of what will occur uh, with this ummah and human existence. He also says in the حُكْمُ مَا بَيْنِكُمْ And there is judgment regarding that which is amongst yourselves. That is rulings for the Muslims and also indeed for uh, the non-Muslims. And he also says وَمَنْ تَرَقَهُ مِنْ جَبَّارٍ Whoever leaves it out of obstinance and out of, over, out of being oppressive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy him. And whoever seeks guidance other than Allah from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, misguide him. And this is the reason why generations after generation return back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially after in our present times, uh, because it's times of uh, uh, you know, misunderstanding and it's time of, of, uh, of confusion, the Prophet ﷺ said, he said to the companions, he says, Taraktu indakum shahidain lam tadillu abdan min ba'di. He said, I've left with you two witnesses, which you will never be mis- misled after me. And he mentioned these two witnesses. He said, Kitabullah, he said, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sunnati and my sunnah, that is my. Uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu uh, was salam. So, before we find out something a bit further about the Quran, it's, it'd be a good good idea, inshallah, if you can know what, where the word Quran actually comes from. Where the word Quran uh, actually comes from. We say it all the time, you know, I'm reading the Quran, or, you know, I'm, I'm going to spend some time reading the Quran, memorize some parts of the Quran. So it's a good idea if you just try to find out, inshallah, where the word uh, initially originates from 
Now, the word uh, Qur'an, as you can see on your slides that you have, uh, on the, on the uh, projector, originates from the Arabic verb Qara'a. Qara'a. Now, the Arabic verb Qara'a, for people who have Arabic before, uh, it's in the past tense, which literally means uh, recited. So the person says, Qara'tu al I read the book. It literally means to, re- uh, to recite or recite it. Now, this is important for lots of different reasons. And the reason why I'm looking at it linguistically is very important for lots of different reasons, which we'll, which we'll carry on in a, in, a, in a short moment, inshallah. Now, the word Qur'an is a verbal noun. The word Qur'an is a verbal noun of the verb Qara'a, uh, as, as you have there. Now, what do we mean when we say verbal noun? We mean by verbal noun uh, an action. Uh, it, it, it denotes an action without a time reference in which it took place. And this is also very important. We'll come back to that in a moment. It's also very important. What do you mean by verbal noun? For example, in English, for a person, if you say uh, he sat in a past tense, he will sit in the future, te- in future tense. The action of sitting, the, the action of sitting, it tells you that an action without the time reference it took place. So in the past tense, it'd be he sat. In the future tense, for example, it would say uh, he is going to sit or will sit. Or present tense, he is sitting. While just saying the, 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 the verbal noun, just saying sitting, tells you about an action, but not a time reference in which it took place. Is that, is that clear? It tells you about, the, about an action without a time reference it took place. Now the word Qur'an is exactly the same. The word Qur'an is exactly the same. That is, it means reciting. It means reciting or, uh, or reading. Reciting or reading. Now, what is the relevance of this? What is the importance of this? The importance of this is, uh, as some of you may be aware, the, the Arabs generally call the actual book which we have, the Qur'an, they actually call that the Al-Mus'haf, which comes from the word suhuf, which comes from the word pages or parchments. The reason the difference between the word Qur'an and Mus'haf is because the Qur'an initially was transported by uh, an oral tradition. That is, the Prophet ﷺ would, reci- uh, would be, be recited to him from Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, thereafter upon the Prophet, and thereafter the Prophet disseminated amongst his companions. Uh, and this was a verbal recitation. This was a, uh, a verbal uh, recitation. Why <coughs> the importance of a verbal recitation? Uh, the importance was that, first of all, uh, there was no margin for error. When it's, uh, something has been taught to you from heart to heart, from a person by, uh, to another person, uh, there's no uh, margin uh, for error. Also, even to our present day, if anybody who's a, a hafiz of the Qur'an, anybody who's, who, who studies the tajweed of the Qur'an, he will have an ijazah. Hiran of Ijaz, I mean, he'll have a license or she will have a license uh, in a, to teach. That's some of the teachers that we have at Darakan, at, uh, my own family. They have a license going back to their teacher, going back to their teacher and returning finally to, to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and thereafter to who? To Sayyiduna Jibreel, alayhi salam, and thereafter to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's the highest Ijazah in the, in the universe, you could say, because it goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Quran is like that, it's transported by people reading to other people reading to other people where is the word how does the how do we understand that together with the fact that we have the quran now within uh, within the within printed form and so forth how that's understood uh, is that that particular book is used as an aid it's used as an aid for a person to help them memorize or to help them read but in, but ultimately a person has to read uh, the Quran in their completed form from beginning to end with somebody in order to gain a license to teach the teach uh, recitation of the book or the tajweed uh, of the book. That's why the word Quran is used because it's actually recitation rather than something that's written within 
uh, with, within a book. Okay, so is that clear when, when we understand the word Qur'an, what it comes from? It's a verbal noun of the verb uh, Qur'a. Uh, that's the first uh, meaning, the verbal noun of the, of the word Qur'a, which means to recite. So therefore, it means literally, if you translate literally as recitation or, or, uh, or reciting. Okay? Recitation or reciting. Now, the word Qur'an, the word Qur'an can also... Uh, have a second meaning. Also have the second meaning. And you have that there. It says passive participle. Makru'a. Uh, the passive participle. What does passive participle mean? Passive participle means something that is recited. Something that is recited. For example, uh, if you say, Muhammad, uh, let's say Zaid hit uh, Bakr. Let's say Zaid hit Bakr. Zaid is the one that's doing the action. The doer, yes, uh, the fa'i in Arabic. Uh, hit is the verb, and amr is the person being hit. He's the recipient of the action. He's the recipient of the action of, of hit. He's the person being hit. So when we say passive participle about the Quran, we say it's makru. The Quran is literally the thing that's being recited. The Quran is the thing that's being uh, uh, recited. Now, What's the importance of all of this to know that the word Qur'an comes from this? The importance is the emphasis our deen has on something known as the sanad. Something known as the sanad. One famous scholar, uh, one of the imams of our deen, uh, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he has a very famous saying. He says, لَوْلَا sanad كُلَّ مَنْ يَشَاء يَقُولُ مَا يَشَاء because if it was not for the sanad, the line of narration, the, the chain in which a person takes his knowledge from another person who takes it from another person, going back to the Prophet ﷺ, if it was not for this line of narration, this sanad, any person could have said whatever they would have wished to say about this deen. However, this deen is uh, uh, protected and this deen is preserved through who? Through uh, people that carry this deen from one generation. Uh, to another and the same goes for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what the book the word Quran points towards that this deen is taken from people and, and who take it from people going back to the Prophet uh, alayhi uh, wasalam. so the word Quran the word uh, uh, Quran it comes from the verbal noun of the verb Qara'a which means uh, the verb Qara'a means to recite so the verbal noun means reciting. And it can also mean makru, the thing being recited. So there's two possible meanings are there. So if anybody's asked, what does the word Qur'an mean? You've got, you've got two possible answers. You've got uh, the thing that's being recited, uh, makru, the passive participle, or the verbal noun, the thing that is uh, rec- with recitation. recitation. And that's why, the, that's why uh, when, when it comes to tilawah, the recitation of the Qur'an, and a person wishes to gain an ijazah in the Qur'an through people, it's always done through our oral tradition, where people, one person reads uh, to, uh, to, to another. And talking, of just going back slightly to the, uh, to the saying of the famous scholar Abdul Mus- uh, Abdullah Mubarak, when he said, he said, Lola uh, Sanad, if it was not for the line of narration, each person uh, who wished would have said whatever he wished about this faith. Now, there's a statement that says, uh, in Arabic it says, uh, Memorization or preservation is within the hearts and not within uh, the lines. That is, الحفظ في الصدور لَيْسَ فِي sutur Memorization is within the, uh, uh, within the heart, not uh, uh, within or upon uh, the lines. Emphasizing also the same point that we're making uh, during this, this, this particular part, is that it is the uh, transportation of knowledge in a tradition, is an oral tradition, in which it takes place from a person uh, to a person. And this is... This is a, spectacularly demonstrated by the by the word Quran, uh, by the word Quran itself. Is that is that clear? 
Okay, so if we ask what is the meaning of the word Quran, we should be aware that it's pos- two possible, uh, two possible <coughs> meanings. Now, we mentioned the saying of the Prophet ﷺ when he mentioned, said that there are two witnesses which if I leave amongst you, uh, you will never be led astray. You will never uh, be led astray. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned these two witnesses by saying, Kitabullah, the book of Allah subhanahu and sunnati, and my sunnah, or my practice. So you have the two words there, Qur'an and sunnah, Arabic, Qur'an and sunnah. What's the relationship between the Qur'an uh, and and the sunnah? Now, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the sunnah, in addition to speaking about, about the Qur'an, <coughs> Allah says in his own book, about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says Allah says about the Prophet alayhi wa sallam that he says that he does not speak from his caprices or desires it is except revelation revealed upon the Prophet alayhi wa sallam so if the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the, uh, the, the, the sunnah the practice of the Prophet if Allah is calling that wahi also how do we understand the Qur'an in comparison to the Sunnah? That's what we're looking at here. We know the Qur'an is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll look at, look at some details about that later on. We also have the Sunnah, uh, the saying of Allah, also revelation. So how do we understand these two different types of uh, revelation? Now, there's some differences you should be aware of between the Qur'an and the Sunnah. There's some differences you should be aware of between the Qur'an and the Sunnah. I'm going to put some of these things on the, on the board here so we know the differences between the two. Now, Al Quran <coughs> Okay, and then you have a Sunnah that, that is the, the sayings of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam So let's look at some of the uh, differences between the two of them. First of all, the Quran is narrated to us, uh, it comes to us by <coughs> uh, mass reported reports, that is, so many people have memorized uh, the, 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 the Qur'an and parts of the Qur'an that it's impossible to envisage that all of them would unite upon uh, falsehood. So the Qur'an is mass reported. The Qur'an is mass reported. That's one major difference with the Sunnah. Not all the Sunnah is mass reported. Not all the Sunnah is mass reported. So, so if you put that not... Not all. Not all the sunnah is mass reported. There's another thing to be aware of also about the, about the Qur'an is that simply reciting the Qur'an whether you understand it or you don't a person is rewarded for this. A person is rewarded uh, for this. This is known as something in Arabic uh, it's called al wahi <coughs> and matlu uh, which translates as uh, the, the 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 revealed reading you could say the revealed reading what does that mean no what does that mean it means that a person can read parts or all or some or a verse or less of the quran and a person, by, just by simply reading that, the person will be rewarded. The person will be rewarded. It's ibadah bin nafsihis. It's worshiping its own essence in itself. The same is not, it's not true of the sunnah. If a person reads the sunnah with the intention of gaining knowledge about the sunnah, that is reward. The person will obviously get reward for that, for, for, uh, for learning the sunnah. If a person that opens up, let's say, some part of Bukhari or any of the books of the Siha, of the sound compilations, and thereafter reads 
uh, in itself, uh, will a person get a reward for that? No, there's no, no, a person will not get a reward for that in itself. Uh, obviously, if a person comes over the names, for example, the names of Allah, or, the, or, the, or salutations upon the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he reads this, he will get a reward for that. But reading the sunnah, it's reading the hadith itself, a person will not be rewarded for that, except if he understands what he's reading, and gaining knowledge as a means for that. So, not necessarily, yes? <coughs> not necessarily for... Uh, uh, not necessarily for for the sunnah. Another difference. So it's it's this is no given another name in Arabic. This is given another name. Just people know Arabic. If you write it down, you can do. It's not necessary. It's known as al wahi ghair matlu. Al wahi. Ghair matlu. Revelation, which is. Not recited, it's not recited. A person cannot recite this in their prayer. And a person, if he recites this solely uh, for worship without understanding what he's reciting, the person will not be, uh, it's, it's not counted as ibadah, as worship. While the Quran, a person reads it, understands it, or doesn't understand it, a person will be, will be, uh, will be rewarded, uh, rewarded for this. Another difference also is that the Quran. You can recite it in your prayer. You can recite it in your prayer. It's a wahi revelation which you can recite in your prayer. Yes? That is in your prayer, in your salah, in the mass. Yes? As for uh, the sunnah, you cannot. Okay? You cannot recite it in your, uh, in your prayer. Uh, the Quran, to touch it, you need to be in a state of the of purity. People will not touch them those who are tahir. Those people who are uh, pure. So another difference between the Quran and this is uh, purity. A person needs to be pure in order to touch the Quran. In order to touch the uh, Quran. The same is not the, not the case uh, for uh, you know, for the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Although obviously uh, a person is recommended to be in a state of purity uh, uh, for all uh, types of worship, including uh, you know reading, knowledge, and seeking, uh, you know seeking knowledge. So those are some of the salient differences between uh, you know the uh, uh, between the Quran and the other type of wahi, the wahi of the Sunnah. Now, now the Sunnah. Now the Sunnah is of, can be of two categories. And we we put into that more depth about the particular Sunnah model. But just as a, as a side note, that's why we're here. Just quickly look at that. You've got something known as the, uh, the, the sayings of the Prophet which come from himself, which come from the Prophet والسلام, through inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that in Arabic has a, has a specific name. Uh, sunnah al Nabawi. Sunnah al Nabawi. From the word al Nabi, that is, if you say prophetic narrations, you can say prophetic narrations. You can translate that, okay? Al Nabawi. So you can say prophetic narrations. We're going to cover this again in some more detail later on in the Sunnah module, okay? Prophetic narrations. Okay. Then you have another type of sunnah known as al Qudsi, or you could put as divine narrations. As yeah. divine narrations. Now, what are the difference between the two? The difference between the two, so you have. Do you have the sunnah, like prophetic narrations, or you have narrations or reports of the prophet? <coughs> then you have that broken into two categories. You have prophetic narrations and divine narrations. What is the difference between the two? Uh, prophetic narrations are those which have been inspired to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within certain parameters. And this goes back to the saying that we mentioned previously when we said, ma wal hawa illa wahyun yuha. He does not talk of propices or desires, it is except 
revelation revealed upon the Prophet ﷺ. So Allah demarcates for him certain parameters, certain boundaries which, which, which is possible for the Prophet ﷺ to say certain things. So the parameters are wide for the Prophet ﷺ to say certain things. So within those things, he could, for example, talk about prayer. Uh, within those things, he could talk about what Muslims believe. Within those things, he can talk about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. Uh, for the believers, so there's, well, there's a wide parameter which parameters which the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, can speak about. Okay, now that's known as prophetic narrations. That's known as prophetic narrations. The words are from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and the meaning is also from the Prophet within those parameters. Is that is that clear? Is that clear? I'll tell you. So. That's prophetic narration. What's divine narration? Divine narrations are those in which the meaning is, is directly and specifically from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The meaning is directly and specifically from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but with the exception that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has said it in his own words. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has said it in his own words. The most famous hadith, there's many hadith about this, but the famous hadith is the hadith of Qudsi, Inni harramtu, Inni harramtu adhulma al nafsi, fala tu zalimu, ya ibadi, oh my slaves, I've made zulm, oppression, prohibited upon myself, so do not oppress each other, do not oppress yourselves, do not oppress and oppress each other. So, prophetic narrations, parameters, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, talks within those parameters from his own uh, self. The wording is from him and the meaning is also from him. As for the divine narrations, the meaning is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly and specifically. However, the, uh, the wording is from the Prophet. The wording is from the Prophet. Is that clear? There you go. Just as more. I can't see this one. Sorry. Contrary, uh, in. Uh, in contradistinction to the Quran, we say about the Quran, we say it's directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, uh, and the meaning is from Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The meaning and the words are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is distinguished from the Sunnah, and especially from the, sunnah, from the uh, Hadith al-Qudsi or the Sunnah al-Qudsiyah. So it's differentiated in that aspect. Okay, so if, I, if you have a quick recap, if you want to ask now, uh, what's the difference between the between Hadith al-Qudsi or Sunnah al-Qudsiya, uh, when I say the divine narrations, yes, and the Quran, what would you say? What would be our response to that? This is for, anybody can say this out, just to make sure we all, inshallah, with us on Sunday morning. So it's a bit heavy, inshallah, it gets easier, inshallah. So if I, if I ask you to repeat the question again, the Quran, we say, what about it? We say it's directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both in terms of its wording and in terms of its meaning. Tayyip, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for Hadith al-Qudsi, we say about that, that what? The Prophet, that's right. We say the, the meaning is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the specific wording, is from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Another, another, another thing you should be aware of also is that the Quran is a miracle, mu'ajizah, linguistic, and many other things, miracle. The Quran is a miracle, while the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam uh, is not the same, cannot be said of that in terms of its form and composition and so forth. And we look at that in, in future uh, future meetings, inshallah ta'ala. There you is that, uh, is that clear? There you good, alhamdulillah. So the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِي uh, ma'ahu That which is with it. That uh, which is with it. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about the revelation, the book of Allah, the Qur'an, and, and that which is with it, talking about the sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu 
wassalam. That Allah subhanahu wa taala has sent down the the uh, the the, uh, uh, the book of Allah and completed the message of the book of Allah through the Sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah says, "Ati Allah wa Rasulah ula amri minkum." Obey Allah and His Prophet and those who, are, who, are, who have authority over you. So the book of Allah is followed thereafter the Sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wassalam. The Sunnah completes. Uh, the meaning of the book of Allah. And that's why we say that both of them are what? Wahi. Both of them are revelation. The Quran is revelation, and so is the Sunnah uh, of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wassalam, from the verse that we recited from uh, Surah Najm, when we said, Ma yum tiku an hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha. He does not speak from his caprices, this is except revelation revealed upon the Prophet, alayhi uh, salatu wassalam. Example of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Allah says, uh, say the prayer, or establish the prayer, sorry, and, and, and give the poor alms or the zakat. Uh, nowhere in the Quran will you find details about how to perform uh, either of these two things. However, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, uh, He says, pray as you have seen me pray. So now we have, now we have proof of how to pray. From the prayer of the Prophet, alayhi uh, salatu, salatu was salam. So this is how we understand the Quran and, 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 the, su- and the Sunnah. So, see, did you have a question? No, it's okay. It's answered. Day bar kafi kafan. So shall we have a short, uh, short break for maybe uh, ten minutes? I will continue with the uh, with, with the rest, inshallah. <coughs> طيب بسم الله الرحمن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين طيب so طيب so we looked at the quran and the sunnah there's two other things you should be aware of about the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in contradistinction to the hadith of the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam and in fact uh, it's it also shares the same name. Now, what we mean by this is we have the two terms there, Al-Qadim and Hadith. Now, Al-Qadim in Arabic, uh, you could translate it as pre-eternal. You translate it as pre-eternal. We believe as part of the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and I mean that in the wider understanding. Uh, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is, 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 a, is a vast uh, majority of the Ummah. As the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said about the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he said about them, he said, for inhum sawwad al a'zam, they are the great number of the Muslims. Anybody that tells us that the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is a small number of people only, know they're wrong. Because the Prophet himself has said, for inhum sawwad al a'zam, they are the great vast majority of the, of the Ummah. Dayyam. So, Qadim, pre eternal. As part of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we believe the Quran to be pre eternal. What do we mean by that? We mean that the what is contained within the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the speech of Allah, <coughs> is the speech of Allah that is recorded. The speech of Allah that is uh, recorded. And we look at this in more detail in the, when we get to the section of Aqeedah. Uh, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sifa, is a quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are like the essence or the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the quality of Allah, the speech of Allah is like the that of Allah that is qadim and pre-eternal. It has no beginning and it has no end. It has no beginning and has no end as we, know, as we will discover when we get to the section of Aqeedah. Just know for the time being that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pre-eternal. And it's not created. The book, uh, the Quran, is not created. It's the speech of Allah, Jalla, wal uh, A'la. Now, in contradistinction to that, you have this, the Hadith, and Hadith in English, uh, translated in English from the Arabic, means something that's new, something that's come about, something that's uh, uh, come into existence. And it's apt that the Hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also shares the same name as the Arabic as this. So when you hear the word hadith, it can mean the hadith of the prophet, and this is the context that we're taking it here. And it can also mean uh, something that's new. When you say something, for, for example, in Arabic, you would say, 
in the hadith, the other hadith that indeed this car is new, for example, or it's something that's uh, you know innovative and new. And we say about the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam that it's also created it's new. That is, the Prophet also was born alayhi salatu wasalam upon him and his family made the salutations. He was born in a particular time, and thereafter he said certain uh, words. And those words came about when they had no non-existence prior to it. So the Prophet ﷺ's speech uh, is obviously uh, created. Is created. Now compare that with the Quran, where we say it's old or it's pre-eternal. It's not created. Uh, the reason why we make this distinction between the two is because as part of part of the, our, our beliefs as Muslims, we believe the Book of Allah subhanahu wa taala to be uh, pre-eternal. However. That pre-eternal book is commentated upon and is brought into relevance, you could say, uh, in, for all times and all uh, uh, places. Uh, by what? By the sayings of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. As we said, uh, Allah says, أَلْتِيْ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهَ That is, pay Allah and His Prophet. Obey Allah and His Prophet. So the old is going back to the book. The qadim is going back to the book of Allah. While the hadith is going to uh, the, prophet of the, of, of the Prophet of Islam. Uh, Prophet uh, our, our Rasul sallallahu Now the incident that famous incident that occurred in Islamic history uh, there was a group that went around uh, called the Mu'tazila uh, and they claimed that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was created they claimed that the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was created and there was a mihna or there was a uh, persecution of anybody who differed from that uh, they became uh, very powerful at one stage, in which one of the one of the caliphs, by the name of Ma'mun, he also adopted their beliefs, and it became a state uh, religion as such. This understanding of the Mu'tazila, this understanding of the Mu'tazila, the West generally, generally translate them or give them the term as the rationalists. They only have the term the rationalists. We don't call them that. Uh, we call them Ahl al Hawa al Bidah, we call them people of innovation and desire. Yes? But they give them the term rationalists. Now, these people, the Mu'tazila, uh, they went around to, to the general people and also to the scholars to inter- interrogate them and to persecute them because of their beliefs. And it's a famous incident occurred where they went to Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal in Basra uh, and he was dragged through the streets to, to say the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was, was created. And uh, Imam Ahmed Hanbal, uh, ta'ala anhu, because of his op- because of his uh, s- strong position of 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 not saying a one word in response to them, uh, he, was, he had he had the title of the leader of the Imam of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the leader of the people of uh, Sunnah and Jama'ah. Another incident occurred with Imam Shafi'i, uh, uh, another famous scholar, also from the first generation. Uh, the first two generations, he s- somebody came to him and they said to him, "What do you say about the Quran? Is it created, or is it uh, old, pre-eternal?" And the people, the person that was asking him this question was from the persecutors, from the Mu'tazila. If he said it was created, he would be uh, uh, let go or such. And if he said it was, uh, so it, and if he said it was old, as we believe as Muslims you would be persecuted. So Imam Shafi'i, he said to the person, he said to him, Amma uh, Az-Zabur, the Psalms, Az-Zabur, Wal-Tawrah, Wal-Injil, Wal-Quran, Kulluha thi arba' Kulluha Makhluqa. He said to the person, he said, as for the Psalms, Zabur of Dawood alayhi salam. As for the Torah, so the Torah of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. As uh, for the Injil, the Bible of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. As for the Quran of our Prophet alayhi salatu He said, these four are created. He said, these four are uh, created. And the person said, this person believes in our beliefs, he's, he's a Mu'tazil like us, and let, let him go. When Imam Shafi was asked about what did he mean by these four, he said, I meant my four fingers. I meant these four fingers are created. And this was a healer, you could say, or a legal device, which is possible if person, if they're, if they're at, the, uh, at the point where their life or their property 
or the limbs are at danger, it's permissible in which to use these devices or to get out of a situation. So this is a famous incident that goes back to uh, Imam uh, Sh- Shafi'i. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's called Hila. It's called Hila. Uh, it's a legal device in which to, in which to uh, uh, free oneself from difficulties at the, at, the, at the point of whether it's going to be a, a death or person's limbs are going to be severely uh, damaged or loss of property in those three circumstances. And inshallah, when we hopefully when we continue our study of fiqh, we'll see how that's the case. There you. Now the Quran. Now the Quran is known by five major names. The Quran is known by five major names. And those are names are referred to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the book itself, in, the, in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's revelation. The first example you have there, or the first name you have there in front of you, and it says, Inna hath al-Qur'ana yahdi lillati hiya aqwam yabashir al-mu'mineen al-lazina ya'maluna salihati anna lahum ajran kabira. So you can see the name word itself, al-Qur'ana. It's highlighted there, al-Qur'an. That's where it's mentioned. If the translation of the verses. Indeed, this Qur'an guides to that which is more upright and it gives glad tidings to the believers, those that work and do good deeds, that they have a mighty and a tremendous reward. They have a mighty and tremendous reward. So, a translation of the verse would be again, Indeed, this uh, Qur'an guides to that which is more upright and it gives glad tidings to the believers, those that do good deeds, and indeed, that for them is a, a great or, 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 or tremendous reward. So you can see the word there. Uh, you can see the word Quran there. So it's referred to this by Allah with this name. Thereafter, you have the second name. The book is also referred to Al Kitabu, the book, the book. As mentioned in this particular verse, Allah says, "Lakal anzalna ilaykum kitaban fihi." Indeed, we have revealed upon you a book. Within it is your remembrance, that is, news about you as humans. And do not take heed or do not uh, ponder over this. So, this is the second uh, name of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Kitab. Al Kitab. Mentioned in the book of Allah itself. Thereafter, you've got three further names. And you have all three in front of you. Tabarak uh, alladhi nazzal al-furqan ala abadihi liyakuna lil'alamina nadheera. Blessings and praise be upon he who sends, who has revealed the furqan. Uh, the furqan can be translated as the, as the criterion or the, or the demarcator. The criterion or the demarcator. Ala abdihi, upon his slave. Liyakuna lil'alamina nadheera. So that it may be. For the universe, a warner. <coughs> universe, a warner. So, the word Al-Furqan. Now, the word Furqan, did anybody hear recently about a book called Al-Furqan Al-Haq? Did anybody hear about it recently? Called Al-Furqan Al-Haq. Uh, the Furqan Al-Haq, you can check it on Amazon, I think it's still on there somewhere. The book, the book called Al-Furqan Al-Haq was a book uh, authored by some American Orientalists and uh, it's paid for by, by some evangelical church uh, in America and it was uh, uh, or oh, they claimed it to be a res- uh, an answer to the challenge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah says fa'tu bi, bi suratin mithlihi when Allah says come with a surah like thereof uh, so they said they've come with a book which is an answer or response to that whole claim. The whole claim. The reason I'm mentioning it is because it's, it's, you know, they've called the book Al Furqan Al Haq. Now, Allah's called the book what? In here. Nazala Al Furqan. Nazala Al Furqan. Okay? So, the word they've used, the book they've called, they've called Al Furqan Al Haq. Now, the reason why I'm writing this is because it's, it just shows you the level of understanding of the language and why, when we look at it later on, 
uh, we look at it later on, the, the power of the Arabic language within the Quran itself and the amazing nature of the Quran itself. Now the word they call the book Al-Furqan Al-Haq. Okay? <coughs> Al-Furqan Al-Haq. The word Furqan itself is a super uh, emphasized uh, noun which means something that separates between truth and falsehood. The word itself literally means something that separates between truth and falsehood. Hence you have the word Nazzala Al-Furqan. Allah revealed the Furqan. Why? Because it's going to demarcate between truth and falsehood. So the word Furqan in itself automatically gives you the meaning of what? Exactly. Differentiating between truth and falsehood. So there's no need to come with that word at all. Rather, it's called something known in Arabic as taqram. Yes? Or itmam. Which means repetition. Which means repetition. And repetition in the Arabic language is, or in any language, is, it's, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. It's magnum. It's not, it's not a good thing. So these people saying out of the challenge of the Quran, even in the title itself, they're blind to the fact that you can't call something Furqan al haq You can call it Furqan, which Allah subhanahu already has. So this is tells you what? This tells you that the level of understanding of people of the language of the Arabs. In fact, it goes back to a famous incident. Uh, it just reminds us of an incident that occurred with a famous scholar called uh, Al-Asma'i. He was a, uh, a scholar of language uh, called Al-Asma'i. And uh, this this scholar, he was within the uh, the Grand Mosque of uh, Basra, giving a dars about the Book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the linguistic miracle of uh, the Quran. Linguistic miracle of the Quran. And he had his, his halaqah, his gathering of his study circle, you could say, of students around him, uh, Asma'i. And he was t- quote, quoting from Surah, uh, uh, surah Al-Ma'idah. When he said, he said, As-sariqu was-sariqa faqta'u aydiyahuma. And then he, can, he ended the verse with Ghafuru rahim He says, the thief and the, and the, and the, uh, thie, and the thief feminine, any lady, faqta'u aydiyahuma. Uh, sever their hands. And then the ayah ends with the, with the, with the ending, Ghafuru rahim and he said this verse to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the people that were studying with him. As he was saying this, a Bedouin Arab walked past. A Bedouin Arab walked past. And he said to him, Ya Sheikh, man hadha? whose speech is this? He said to the Sheikh, you know, who's, who, who's, who, this speech that you're saying, whose is this? And uh, Asma'i said to him, uh, you know, he said to him, Ittaqillah, fear Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna hadha qalam Allah. Indeed, this is the word of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, fear Allah. So, the Arab said, Wallahi, hadha uh, la uh, Allah. This cannot be the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Asma'i now saying, and I pull look at Allah. I'm saying this is a book of Allah or the speech of Allah, and you're saying it's not the speech of Allah. He goes, Wallahi, hadha la yukulam Allah. And the Arab said, he's better in Arab. He said, this cannot be the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Asma'i said to him, Hala al Qur'ana. He goes, Have you memorized the book, Quran? He says, No. He says, Hal hafiz di hadhi surah. He goes, Have you memorized this? Surah, the Arab Bedouin says, La. So then he says, Al Hafiz the Hadhi al Ayah. He goes, Have you memorized this particular ayah? And the Bedouin goes, La. He says, No. He says, so Then Asma'i said to him, He says, so How do you know this is not the book of Allah? He goes, And Bedouin repeated to himself, He said, And it's true. Asma'i said, This cannot be the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This cannot be the book of Allah. So Asma'i at that point, He said to somebody, Go and fetch a mushaf. At that, like we said, that the, 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 the tradition was oral, the Quran was only used, or the book was only used in order to correct mistakes or to learn from it. So it, somebody went off and brought back the parchment of the Mus'haf of the Quran. They brought it back and they opened up to indeed to Surah uh, Al Ma'idah, and it wasn't actually at the end of the ayah, it wasn't Ghafur Rahim, it was Azizun Hakim. The next ayah is Ghafur Rahim. The end of this ayah is Azizun Hakim. So Asma'i was shocked. He says, How did he know this? You haven't memorized the book of Allah, you've not memorized the surah, 
not memorize this verse. He said, and this is how the Arab, this is the power of the language, and this Arab, he's better when he said to him, he said, in the makani qat al yad, has a laysa maqam al maghfara, wal rahma, like al maqam al izza, wal qudra. He said, in this time when, when the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being administered, this is not a time for mercy. It's not a time for uh, rahma. It's a time of what? <coughs> Izza, raising the, the strength and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and Hakim. So indeed, he was right. The Bedouin was right. Even though he had not memorized the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knew that the word, or the way the Quran was formed and the way the words were formed, that at the end of this particular verse was the words, Azizun Hakim. That is a time of the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a time of the, uh, the, the, the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raised by administering his hukum, his judgment upon, uh, upon people. And this is exactly what the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is like. Is that there's miracles within the book of Allah from beginning uh, to end. One example of this, and there's many, there's hundreds of examples. This is just one example. So, Muzammir, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> Is the saying this? This is why this. This is why the Quran can be translated by the way. Quran bika, fakabir. So can you see at the back there? Just a minute. Sorry, just a minute. Okay. 